Hi everyone. In last video, we looked at the two feature engineering technique with respect to text. One of them was the count vectorizer. The other one was the TFID vectorizers. So they are nothing but taking our text and converting into the vector representation so that we can pass on that vector representation to our machine learning model. So when we look at the, the first one, which is a count vectorizer using sklearn, which is nothing but simply considering for a given sentence whether the particular word present or not if it is present how many times it's present that is what this count vectorizer mean it is counting those words in that particular sentence and represent it as a vector and here we don't consider anything with respect to the order of the words and all these things right and the next technique we saw was the tfidf uh, technique which is somewhat uh, theoretically better than what we have in account vectorizer because in TFIDF we calculate score for each word and that code that particular score is depend on these two things the first one is the term frequency and the second one is the inverse document frequency so the term frequency is nothing but how many times that particular word has occurred in that sentence and inverse document frequency is nothing but how rare that particular word across the other documents. So if you have a word which occurring very frequently in that particular document, but it occurs very rarely or not occurring in the other document, then that particular word will get high importance or high TFIDF value. So that was the, uh, the second uh, feature engineering technique. Today we're going to look at the third one, which is nothing but the word vectors or you might have heard of word to wake thing right so that's what we're going to see today so we will see how to use the pre-trained word vectors which is nothing but you still have you know a vector representation for your words and we will see how to use that particular you know uh, pre-trained model use that pre-trained model to calculate the vector representation for our data set and then finally you know, fit that particular uh, feature vector representation to the uh, machine learning model and we will see whether we get better performance or not, right? So what exactly, you know, word vectors or word to vec? If you look at the, uh, you know, how do we represent a particular word? So one of the thing to represent a word is called one hot encoding. Is nothing but what we first do, we find out all the unique word in your data set. Let's say we have a 10,000 unique words in our data set. And then what we do, we assign a unique index to each word. Let's say you see this word Rome, we assign index one. Let's say there is another word Paris in our data set, we will assign it index. Let's say this particular, the first index, this is the zeroth index. And similarly, you will have index for each word. And then if I want to represent this particular word Rome, then what I will do, I will take one vector right of a length equal to the number of unique words i have so this will be of a length 10000 dimension and then what i will do i will find the index of the row let's say which is the zeroth index and i will put one there and all other values will be zero this is how we represent particular word row similarly for paris what we will do we will find the index of the paris in that 10000 dimensional vector and we will put one there But the problem with this representation, when we represent Rome or this Paris using this long vector, the first thing is this vector representation is very long, right? So first of all, if you have 10,000 words, or let's say you have 1 lakh words, then each word needs to be represented by that 1 lakh vector, right? And most of the things will be zero. So it will be a sparse matrix or that particular sparse vector. The second thing is we are not able to compare the two words. So mathematically, if I take the dot product of two numbers, that tells me how similar these two particular vectors. So if I have a words, we, let's say I have a three words, two of them are more similar to each other and one of them is let's say dissimilar to them. But if I take the one out encoding, no matter which word dot product I take with which vector, the dot product will be zero. So even though you can see that let's say there is a Paris and the France, which are related to each other, the dot product will be the zero. 
so this is not a good representation when we want to compare certain words whether we want to you know have those meaningful vector representation and that is where the word vectors comes into the picture then how do we find such a vector representation which will be comparatively you know uh, less number of uh, vector size or you know smaller vector size instead of having this 10000 dimensional we might have let's say 100 dimensional or 300 dimensional vector and also we should be able to compare the two vectors right so that is overall intuition behind the you know the word vectors so here is the uh, the this particular block post right uh, they have given a, a good intuition here so let's think of that we decided to create a vector of dimensional 4 to represent each word with the four dimensional and we can intuitively think that that let's say one of the dimension represent the gender aspect the other represent the royalness aspect now this is something we are thinking right uh, it need not to be the same but then what happen if we have some meaning for each dimension of the vector then depends on the which word we are representing those values will change for example if you look at this particular vector let's say man so the man will have some high value for gender but it might not have some value for let's say royal or the age or the food because man is more of like in gender similarly for women we will have high value for the gender and the for other dimension there will be a smaller value and again you could see there should be some difference between those two values which represent the gender for both man and women similarly if you look at the king definitely the king has a two aspect first of all the gender is towards the man so it should have high value for gender and it will also have some value for royalness which was not here right so this meaning you should be able to see if you are able to represent this words using the vector representation whose dimension actually encodes a meaning because of this thing what will happen you should be able to compare the vectors of man or vectors of king or vectors of women and queen and even you can perform some arithmetic operation so that is the intuition so i'm not going too much into the theory because my focus will be on hands on thing we will see how to use this particular word vectors and solve our problem but uh, you should go and read about you know uh, the word to vector theory how to train those word to vector you know that kind of thing you can go and read more about it so let's go back to our notebook and what we will do let me install from you know this library called jensim so jensim is the library which makes us easy to use those particular word vectors right so jensim has an api using which we can download some word to vectors you can read uh, you know documentation of jensim what it does and you know what all things specially i use jensim for word to vec kind of thing and the second thing for topic modeling jensim is quite popular for the topic modeling kind of thing so we will see the its you know word to vec aspect of it so let's uh, we have installed this thing using the pip and then what i will do i will import certain thing that i i need so you might see there i am importing you know jensim the numpy matplotlib or some so you know data science libraries that we might need it right and then i'm just printing the jensim version here okay uh, setting the random seed so that i can you know uh, reproduce this result now this is what i was talking how do we use those pre trained word vectors so jensim has an api using that api we can download the pre trained word vectors so someone has trained those vectors on a huge data and finally for given any word we can get the vector representation associated with and we we can think of those vector representation has certain meaning so that if i compare the two words and their vector representation if those words has any meaning or let's say semantic similarity in real world then i should also see that similarity if i perform a mathematical operation like a dot product on those particular vectors or check a cosine similarity of those particular vector you will just see what i am actually talking so let's first of all you know see what are the different uh, word to vector models are available so if you use the jensim downloader info and if you look at the models you will see what are different vectors or the vector models are available and they have certain convention so this is like you know this is one of the famous from the google which is what to make model train on the google news and which is a 300 dimensional and then you will have other smaller things so this is so the globe is also one of the technique 
for re, you know creating the word vectors and you could see we have a couple of things so using this jensim downloader we can simply use api.load and we give the name of the one of the vectors that we want to load let's load this glow twitter 50 vector it might take uh, you know a uh, few seconds so the thing is that this vector if you want to load the large vector specifically let's see the google one let's say 300 dimensional it takes some time to load that particular vector so when i tried loading it on colab it took around 13 to 15 minutes to load this particular vector and also after loading while using i frequently face the session crash so i think it exceeds the ram, ram sometimes and you know session crash and we have to repeat the same steps so what i did actually i have loaded that particular google news vector and saved that vectors here so this is how you can save vectors so if you load any vector like this you can use it's a save method and give the location where you want to save those particular vectors so this is where i have saved them and we can also load them i will show you how to load them so let's see whatever the vectors we just downloaded which is wb which is actually those vectors maybe we can see what its type okay you can see uh, the type is something called keyed vectors this is something the jensen type what we have now what we will do this vector what we downloaded it act like a lookup or a dictionary you can think of you can pass any word to it and it will retain a vector representation of that word that's it's something like a lookup so you could see we got some vector representation look at look at the length of that vector we see the 51 because we have downloaded that uh, a 50 dimensional glow vectors which was trained on the twitter data but uh, when it comes to let's say the accuracy of those particular vectors it's always better to go with the uh, you know what i can say go with the bigger vector representation like this particular uh, vector representation so let's see what we will do uh, we will try to do some operation using this uh, vector right and uh, I will not load that thing yet so this is where i have loaded those 300 dimensional let's forget this for now and let's compare what we just loaded so we we can ask our word vector to tell the similarity between these two particular words so it has a method called similarity so let's see what is the similarity between so we can see the similarity between apple and mango which is 0 0.58 and let's see the similarity between the apple and car which is 51 doesn't seems to be good because we know that apple and mango are much more closer to each other compared to what apple and car so we expect we should have a high similarity here and low here maybe we can try using our bigger vector representation right which i saved the similar way i simply load them and the save them here and once you save you can use the load method to load them so let me load that particular vector so that we get the bigger vectors here right and again, as I said, it might crash a session and then I have to repeat these steps again. So it's loading. Once it loads, we will execute these two cells again and, and we will see the dimension of that particular vectors what we are loading okay it has load i think it loading took 40 seconds but if i want to download this thing this might take a 15 minutes also so let's see now again because we have stored in the same variable wb now we see we have bigger vector representation Let's look at the length, which is the 300 dimensional. That is what the Google vectors, what I downloaded. Now let's check using those vectors, what's the similarity score for Apple and Mango and what is for the Apple and car. Now you see it is much more meaningful. So definitely the bigger vectors, larger vector 200, 300 dimensionals are way better than those 50 dimensional vectors, right? Because now this is something uh, what we were expecting. 
just like we can check a similarity let's check a similarity here pairwise so we have a couple of words car minivan and, and some of them and you could see we got the highest similarity between the car and minivan and then you have very less similarity for the other word the car and communism and all those things so definitely this is what i mentioned at the start of the video that if there are two words which has some semantic similarity or or they have a similar meaning in the real world we should expect the same similarity when you compare their vector representation and that is what we are currently seeing we know that the car and minivan are much more closer in the meaning in the real world compared to the car and communism and that's what it is reflecting here another uh, thing is that using word vector we can also check just like similarity we can also check what are the most similar words for given my words and you can tell that whether you want these words so there are two ways you can specify those words you want them the new words to be the positive towards this particular words or the negative towards these words right so positive means the new words we want to be similar like this particular let's see what words we get similar to this car and minivan okay we got a word called suv we got a word called vehicle pickup truck and you could see all of them are some vehicles right so this is how you can generate the similar words given any particular word and we specify that i want to see the top five words each word we got similar to the above words and also we got the score associated with it you can also think you know that among these words which doesn't match with the others so i think it's odd out or odd one out kind of thing right that is also you can check so these are all uh, you could see out of all this word it thinks that the car doesn't match with the other word because all are natural elements and this is something car you can think of it's a man made or the man made uh, particular you know uh, whatever that object so this is see how powerful and beautiful this vectors you can check the similarity you can find out the you know similar words for a particular word and you can even check whether you know particular word matches with the other word or it is odd among the others let's look at this particular aspect again you know that positive thing so let's say we want to find a similar words which are positive towards the woman and king but they are negative towards the man so we want those words should have similarity these words but they should be away from this word so let's mm -hmm. see what happens so we got queen monarch princess these are the words that it is related to the women and king but away from the man so you might say that these are all related to the female gender right what will happen if if we don't put this negative aspect here what things we will get you see if i don't put the, uh, this thing then i get the similar words for women and king like a man queen girl so we see man is appearing because it is definitely similar to the king or has some contextual similarity with the women but when you put something negative so we want something which is close to women which also has a king aspect you can think of it so you want king aspect but you don't want man so what is remaining if you subtract man from the king the things remain only the royalness so you have a women and the royal that is why you see the queen and princess appearing here so this is how beautiful it is right and these are the famous example another thing is that let's take a few random words i pick up like one two man woman and table and what i will do we will try to visualize them right but since we can't visualize those 300 dimensional vectors then what we will do we will use pca which is you know principal component analysis which is nothing but dimensional reduction dimensionality reduction technique so we want to reduce those 300 dimensional to only two dimensional so that we can see here it's fine if you don't have used this particular thing just ignore this thing just see whether uh, what we see here right so what we did every word instead of 300 dimensional we reduce it to only two dimensional and then we will plot those words and we will see whether we could see something interesting there you can see when we plot these words let me you know okay you see in this particular plane woman and man come somewhat closer compared to where the table which is far away from so definitely even on the two dimensional we can see that vector representation still has some semantic meaning with respect to our real world that we see women and men are closer in the representation 
and you know one and two got closer because they are numbers these are genders and this is something totally different from them right so this is what you see even when you reduce them from 300 dimensional to the 200 dimension right uh, sorry not a 200 just a two dimensional right now what we will do enough now we have a good vector representation for a particular word then let's try to you know build a classification model what it will does it will represent our text using this particular vector representation so let me first load our data which is the same thing what we have used in our previous video which is that toxic comment uh, you know data set where you have a comment and we tell whether that comment is toxic or not that's what we have but the thing is that we just saw that you have a representation for a word so if i you pass this particular word let's say this you will get some vector associated with if you pass this you will get some vector but how do we represent the sentence right so the one way is you can take vector representation of this concatenate with the vector representation of this and you can do this thing but the problem with this thing is that then your representation for a single sentence will depend on the number of words you have here so imagine you have a 300 dimensional vector and there are 10 words here then it will become 3000 dimensional vector. But what if here you have 20 words, then it will become 6000 dimensional vector here. So this is not going to work. You need a, the sentence to be represented in you know, all the sentence to have the same length when you represent for the machine learning. So that is the reason that might not be a good approach to concatenate. What other approach we have? We might do a summation or you can take an average of the word. So what we will do, we will go with the average approach. We will take our each sentence, what we will do, we will find each word in that sentence, get its vector representation and keep adding all the words and finally take the average of those names. So the final sentence representation will be having the same length for what we had for a word length. So ultimately we should get a sentence with the 300 dimensional and each sentence will have the same length, the 300 dimensional width, right? So this is what it does. It take a sentence and we have a word vector we see what is it vector size so it has one of the attribute called vector size so this will be having value 300 then we use numpy and create a big vector of a length this vector size so here you get a vector size of 300 dimensional all will be the zeros then what we will do we will iterate through our sentence this is what we will do for w in our sentence or let's say whatever the tokens we have we will see the do we have that particular word present in our word to wake if it is there we count increase the count because we want to take average this way that is why we want to know how many words were in that sentence and then what we will do our zero vector we will add the vector representation of this particular word so when you complete this loop you have eventually add all the vectors associated with the each word in that sentence in this final vector and finally you divide by the number of words and this way for each sentence you are able to get the vector representation which is equal to the summation or sorry the average of all the word vectors inside that particular sentence also this function you might have seen the last time which is the we have used for the spacey tokenizer what does it does uh, what does it do it simply take a sentence right and find the lemma which is the root word for all the words and then does some basic check it check does this word is a stop words is it equal to the punctuation if it is we don't want to take it and we only take the words which doesn't match to one of them so this is how we are filtering our stop words and punctuation art so that is what we have seen in the last time also so we're going to use this both of this function right so let me execute this uh, thing and let's see what happened this particular this sentence vector right so we can pass any sentence to it and we will get the vector representation should we print any intermediate steps here maybe you want to know what is this what we got right so let's print this thing this should be a zero vector that particular thing let's run okay you see Initially, we declare everything as a zero and then finally we modified, which is nothing but the average of all the word vectors inside that particular sentence. So let me comment it again. So now we have a capability to take the sentence and give. Now sentence could be this sentence also, or it will be a list of tokens also, because in both the way you can iterate, even it is list of tokens, you can iterate and even, you know, so we want to pass actually the list of tokens, which is nothing but the list of words that we will get. 
So let's do that thing. What we will do first, we want to stop word list because we are using them on the top right. And then these are some of our punctuations, which we are taking from the spacing. We have seen this thing in our previous video, nothing big deal. Now let's do one thing. We have our comment text in our data frame. Here, let's first tokenize this thing. So instead of having this big string, we should get the list of words and we, we will be filtering the stop words and all punctuation, all right? So let's run that step. It might take some, so you in a pandas, you can do something like this. You take that column and you apply the function that we want to apply and it will return return value in a new column. I call it as a tokens. So let's run this thing so that things will be much more clear what we want to achieve. It might take few seconds to, you know, convert our text into the tokens. Now we will see, this is what I'm saying. So it took our sentence, this take comment, and then converted into the list of tokens according to our that function. And it has removed all the stop words that we don't want. Now, once you have a tokens, then we want to pass our vector thing, which is here, this one, sorry, this one, which take our sentence, which is nothing but list of token. That is why we are able to iterate through these words, because we know that is the list of words what we are passing. So let's, uh, you know, let's pass similar way just what we did with the comment text. Now we will perform function on this tokens. So let's take these tokens and apply the sentence to vector so that we can get the average vectors of this thing. And let's do that thing. This also might take few seconds. Okay, it finished faster. And you see now, we have a vector column, which represent a vector of what we have here, right? So this is nothing but our training data. Now we have each our comment represented in a vector form that we can pass to our machine learning algorithm. And what we will do, I took that column and converted into the list format. And you can see X is our training data, Y we can think of our labels. And let's look at the first example. So nothing but the vector that we just saw. This is the 300 dimensional vector what we have that we're going to pass to a machine learning model for the classification and then you have here toxic which is nothing but the zero and one all these things right again we will use the train test split from a circuit loan and you know split our data set x and y into the training and testing making test set as a 20 percent i'm using some basic model like logistic regression from the circuit loan and then fit our training data which is x train and the y train and once we fit our data, let's predict on our test data and see the accuracy. And we got some, you know, here. Let's compare with what we had got with the TF, IDF and the thing, right? So this was the TF, uh, this was the count vector. This is the TF, IDF. Look at this thing. For accuracy, we got 88%. Here we had 86%. Here we have 84%. So seems to be accuracy got improved using our word to wake representation what about the precision here it is 0 0.89 here we have 87 here we have 90 so if you look at the precision we got you know less precision compared to what we got in the tf idf actually slightly less what about the recall recall there is a significant improvement you can see where we have 0 0.81 here we have 0 0.8 but here we could see we have 0 0.86, which is pretty significant improvement what we got on the recall. So the, I think this was the, um, so if you look at the overall, you know, metric, we can say that word to wake is working better than the TF IDF. And this need not to be case, though theoretically we know that, you know, that word to wake should work better compared to what we have TF IDF, but you should always do an experiment. You should at least check what, you know, accuracy or the metric you got on TF IDF and what you are getting with the word vectors, right? So this is what, this is how you can you use the pre-trained word vectors and fit that particular word vectors to the classification model and, and, and do the 
classification and i couldn't spend much time on the theory part of it but i would suggest go and you know read about uh, this particular you know word vectors how how do we we exactly train those word to wake models right whether it's a neural network or what kind of algorithm it is and right so you can read more uh, about it and do some hands on with respect to this part you know you can create some simple application using this thing right checking the similarity between the words and you know finding on which word doesn't match so these are the good thing so <clears throat> we can even train our own word to wake models so if you look at the uh, you know documentation of jensen you will see how to train your own word to wake model currently we have used pre trained model which is from the google but you can also train your own word to wake model and then check whether the accuracy of your pre trained model can compare it with the your own train uh, word to wake model maybe i can you know next video i might do on that uh, not sure but you guys can uh, do an you know experiment with it and let me know in comments you know uh, what observation you find you can try different data set and do you find that word to wake is always better than tfidf or that is not the case right so you can do all this uh, thing later so thanks for watching i hope you found this video useful and um, i will be sharing this code so that you can do your you know hands on with this particular uh, thing and if you haven't subscribed to my channel please do subscribe i saw recently we have crossed like 1000 subscriber that is definitely motivating and i will be creating you know more natural language processing video thank you